little while ago, a good friend of mine gave me a Bible translation that was by a Jewish scholar. And the portion he gave me, which is quite a big tome, was um, Joshua to Kings. And uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting translation because what the uh, translator has tried to do is capture all those Jewish idioms uh, that are often um, not carried over into English. And it's a fascinating read and a, and a very interesting book. And I've spent quite a bit of time reading, particularly through the book of Judges, which I, I, I like very much, the book of Judges. And I was struck again reading in Judges how that refrain recurs about there was no king in Israel and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. In fact, the, the whole book ends with that statement. And of course, it's a, it's a bit of a, an apology for kingship and the need and, and, and uh, establishing with the people the, the rightness of David being on the throne. And of course, now we live when the ultimate kingdom has come that the Lord Jesus Christ, who came preaching the gospel of the kingdom and the whole message of the New Testament is the kingdom of God. And we all acknowledge that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But there's still, to me, an anomaly there because while we confess his kingship, there are a lot of people who live their lives as if there were no king. By that, I mean, while they gladly acknowledge that Jesus is Lord, they don't live their lives as if they were living under his Lordship. They still live their lives by doing what's right in their own eyes. There's very little consultation of the Lord in the decisions that they make, um, in the jobs that they take, in the people that they marry, in the places where they live. And it seems to me that if we are in the kingdom, which when we are born again is what, where we are, he's brought us out of the kingdom into the kingdom of the son that he loves. And if we're in that kingdom, then we are submitted to the king. And if we're submitted to the king, then we owe allegiance and obedience to the king. And yet many people, while theoretically acknowledging the kingship of Christ, live their lives as if they were king of their own will and their own decision. And I think that's why so many people are not living in the fullness of the salvation that God has brought them into. They make wrong decisions. They do foolish things. Um, they take rash uh, movements in their lives and end up in trouble. And I think one of the easiest things to be is a Christian. I know it has its pressures. I know it has its persecutions. I know it has its challenges. But when you're submitted to the King and you seek the King and His will for your life, when you make your decisions based on inquiring of Jesus and feeling the response of the Holy Spirit and his leading, then life becomes much more easy, much more fraught, uh, much more less fraught, much more comfortable. Jesus made it very clear that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added to us. And we must be, as the kingdom people, those who obey the king, those who listen to his commands, those who follow his leading, those who respond to what the Spirit is saying to us in every given situation. And I'd like us to become much more kingdom orientated in our individual lives. Not just to acknowledge this, this kind of great king 
who sometimes feels afar off, but a king who cares for us, a king who loves us, who care, a king who wants the best for us, and a king whose will and whose ways are much better than ours. And when we submit ourselves to them, we do find all that we need. The, the Apostle Paul says the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And that's the kingdom that we're in. And that's the kingdom where God has brought us. And that's the king whom we worship and whom we must always obey.